Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to welcome you all in the Product Execution Technology Conference and in the first exciting uh, technical session, which is artificial intelligence. Uh, allow me to start introducing myself. Uh, my name is Lama Tatwani, Software Development Division and Solutions by 42. Uh, I will be moderating this session with our great speakers, and I'm sure it will be a fruitful and informative talk. Uh, as engineer Majid al uh, stated in the opening of the conference, uh, the importance of arti artificial intelligence and how it can be helped uh, uh, in the project execution process. Therefore, we are pleased today to have experienced speakers with a career full of achievements in this field. Uh, Vargas and Dr. Abdullah Al-Hallafi and engineer Osama uh, Azami to talk more about artificial intelligence and project management. Starting with Dr. Ricardo Vargas, founder and managing the solutions, and he will be talking about the challenges to implement AI as a tool to support a project execution. Dr. Ricardo, the floor is yours. Uh, Dr. Ricardo, if you can unmute yourself, please. I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and for uh, uh, inviting me for this conference. Uh, I think this topic of artificial intelligence is an extremely relevant topic for all of us. So I want to talk today uh, briefly about the main challenges of art the use of artificial intelligence. And um, the first thing we need to understand is what artificial intelligence is about. So artificial intelligence use current data from past projects, past performance, and try to correlate these data, create, I would say in a, in a simple way, some kind of formula that could guide the behavior and the patterns of the data. So you try to make connections among different inputs to create a more stable output that will predict for you some behaviors before they happen. For example, if we talk about machines, so we can talk about correlating the time of the machine is on, the kind of use of the machine to see when this machine will potentially fail. When we talk about using this in a project environment, so what do we aim? We aim to combine different types of data from the planning and execution process of previous projects, trying to create a generic pattern that could wrap uh, image you can see. We have something like six points that we know exactly what happened with this, uh, uh, with this data. And then we try to create a generalization, so to create a formula. And what is important for me to, to tell you now is that this is not something that is a very recent. I wrote an article ago about that. What's the difference between the word in 2015 and the word today? It's the machine ability to process large sets of data. And this is for me, absolutely the most critical aspect of what we do with machine learning and artificial intelligence. So how you are able to have a massive amount of data that could in a reliable way predict some behaviors. And this is one example that we can use in terms of artificial intelligence for a project behavior. For example, let's suppose you have a list of projects and some basic data about these projects, like complexity, like the site location, the budget, the duration of the project, relevant stakeholder groups, and you try to predict how much investment do I need to manage this effort. So based on a series of previous projects, you can use an algorithm to teach the algorithm to learn based on the past performance and predict, okay, how much money do I need to spend 
to manage that kind of project based on the location of the project, complexity, budget, duration, and relevant stakeholder group. So this is just one example for us. However, for me, I think the most important uh, uh, chart I want to share with you, it's a lot of people are talking today about the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence. But some of the use are extremely complex. For example, I, I plotted here six different use, and I'm trying here to compare the impact on, on your management ability and the complexity to implement. For example, uh, on this green spot, to estimate task effort, you can have a relevant effort and with a low complexity. Many softwares for project management today, they can do that. They can do that. For example, um, Microsoft uh, servers, uh, Microsoft machine learning can do that. So you can put the resources and give some parameters and they will estimate if it takes 40 hours, 50 hours, 25 hours. The second is the blue one, is to automate admin tasks. For example, uh, chatbots, uh, for example, basic reporting. On the yellow, we, we have on the yellow that is on the low here, we have the planning low complexity projects. So you can pre-populate projects. You can use basic data and pre-populate. So instead of you creating the WBS and everything, you can pre-populate it for low complexity data. However, if you see the high impact, portfolio management, cost and risk forecasts, and mainly the team fitting, how you can fit a team, for example, based on their skills and their work together, what is the best combination to reduce risks and improve project, project performance. This is a massive value for the project. However, it's an extremely complex. And why this is so complex? For three basic things that I want to discuss. First, poor or wrong data. If you have poor or wrong data, you have poor learning and poor results. The second aspect is large sets of data are need to create reliable patterns. And most of the time we don't don't have this historical information. It's very hard, okay? And several project related activities and success factors, they rely on human and soft skills that are far harder to model and predict like motivation, teamwork, uh, power, conflict management, negotiations. And these are very hard to predict using the current traditional AI so these were the, the basic steps I want to, to talk. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and I'm ready for the questions. Thank you, Dr. Ricardo. Uh, you have talked about the cost and risk forecast and team fitting as the highest in impact and complexity. How much time do you think that this can take in terms of technology? Oh, I think I, think I would say that uh, at least between five and 10 years. And, and I'm assuming that people are starting to collect data now because without the data, it's impossible for you to create these predictions and use mostly on the team fitting because of this soft skills and these basic skills that we need. Okay. Uh, is there a relationship between the success of AI and the methodology used in a project? For example, if uh, does agile projects have a higher success rate than the waterfall projects? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't believe. This is my personal. I don't believe that the method you you manage or your delivery approach is the key factor for you to succeed. So for some types of projects using an agile approach is extremely relevant and good. But for other projects, if you use an agile approach, it will create more and more challenges because you need to have some clear scope and, and some definitions for you to move on. For example, I work a lot in capital projects and it's not easy at all for you to manage, fully manage using agile methods. And I'm not saying that agile methods are the same as agility mindset. Agility mindset is critical for everything. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, last question we have, uh, what do you suggest to organization right now in terms of collecting data? Yeah, I think that the first thing you need is to centralize data and start creating learning information about the project. So everything you can store related to performance, delays, risks, risk register, risks that happen, everything, because all these information will be extremely critical for you when these tools come to the market. So you will have the information. And this is the biggest gap we face today. Many times we don't have this information so we cannot use machine learning and artificial intelligence to create these patterns of behavior. Thank you so much, Dr. Ricardo, for this amazing presentation. Uh, moving to Dr. Abdullah Halafi, a networks and systems specialist at Saudi Aramco. And he will be talking about Edge AI, uh, transforming construction safety monitoring. Dr. Abdullah, please, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum and thank you for having me. This is Abdullah Al-Halafi, excited to be here today and uh, a pleasure to be with great moderator and knowledgeable speakers. Uh, looking forward to this wonderful opportunity to share our experience, to uh, develop and deploy the latest artificial intelligence and computer vision for transforming surveillance and control of construction project safety compliance. As we heard uh, from Mr. Abdelkarim al Ghamdi's speech this morning, we are accelerating the adoption and scaling up the deployments of disrupted and multi-purpose digital solutions. Our focus remains to deliver safer, cost-effective, and sustainable capital projects. The Contractor Safety Committee study showed that 98% of on-job fatalities were mainly due to human error. So our solution aims to address the common root causes like inadequate supervision or oversight, inadequate hazard assessment to make the proper risk assessment. We are living in the data era, so we wish to leverage the available data sources the wealth of information from video surveillance systems for example, construction sites. And by utilizing the uh, fourth industrial revolution enabling technologies and unlocking the opportunities, we are able to transform that data into a meaningful insight to enhance the workplace safety. When we talk about AI, most people consider that as mimicking uh, human thoughts. And that's where we get to the idea of machine learning as a subset of AI. And we take it further to deep learning through CNN. That's not the uh, news channel, of course, but convolutional neural network, which resembles the connectivity patterns between neurons in our nervous system and is commonly used in analyzing visual images. The advantages of having the intelligence done closer to the data source or at the edge or the cloud of the cloud or the internet. This way we alleviate the, the, the dependency on the internet with its latency, congestion, and noise. We, we can also overcome cybersecurity restrictions. This is appealing concept for construction safety at remote sites, as well as future critical applications such as machine to machine communications, take out to everything, which needs quick response time. So we focused on use cases that address the common road causes and by classifying objects, identifying if we are detecting a human worker or a crane or a moving vehicle, we detect in compliance with the policies and the safe working practices. Violations on personal protective equipment, crane hazards, scaffolds, 
early detection of electrical trip and fall hazards and workers health issues. So we look at the design here and we see that different use cases are detected from several IoT nodes streamed through the HAI device or processing into a central local server. It will publish the notifications to the site safety officer or the project management team and will do monitoring trends and KPIs that can be extended through a central dashboard for visualization and further analysis. We are showing here some of the examples of the output where we can see live video feeds. Uh, we can check PPE compliance, hazards overview, and alerts list with timestamp and location of the violation. The sky is the limit for innovation. So we have deployed construction safety eye as a, and filed a patent in the, in the US patent office. This forms a key component of the project's digital twin to monitor safety, quality, and construction progress. This would not be achieved without resolving many challenges. We address the uh, standardization and governance, for example, in alignment with the, the key stakeholders. So the solution was included in the digital twin published best practice and interoperability of systems and system interfaces were addressed in the video surveillance standard. We, all, we also looked at the hardware procurement and the design, which requires knowing the details of the device, the manager device, the IoT nodes, the cameras, and if needed, the wireless communication system or networks. This agile execution required a specialized skill set and integration experience, and we have all that. For example, the data collection during the pandemic where travel and site access had some restrictions, we needed alternative ways to gather the data and retrain the model. Implementation strategy, we went over several phases from a proof of concept to small scale deployments to incorporating the lessons learned into the governance that will facilitate going to mass deployments to realize the value at scale. So before I conclude, I should say, we keep our eyes on safety through the safety eye. And you please keep in touch. Thank you. I'm back to you, Lama, for uh, discussions. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Um, Dr. Abdullah, what other quantifiable benefits you see from implementing an AI for your application? Uh, well, thank you for the question, Lama. Uh, I'm not going to be talking here about the cost benefit analysis and uh, uh, the, the before uh, safety near, near miss happens. But uh, I will give you an example. Uh, we can hear an approaching uh, vehicle sound and uh, uh, we correlate the shape when we see it by our eyes to something that we have already uh, stored in our brains about that vehicle shape and the sound. And probably we can say that the, the vehicle is really uh, speeding, over speeding, uh, knowing the conditions of that specific place or the, or the street. But can we tell for sure how much is the, is the driver's speed? Is it 120, 134, 161? No one can tell for sure until we use some other uh, measurement devices like the speed gun. But if we want to have more information about that vehicle, the color, the model, maybe the information or the owner information. Uh, we want to know, for example, if the driver is having his seat belt, uh, is he carrying his mobile phone while he's driving? Definitely, we cannot do this with our um, uh, you know, speed gun. So we have to go to more advanced and sophisticated systems like the Saha. So I hope you got the idea. I want to summarize the benefits, the other point five benefits uh, in the detection. Uh, Accuracy. Uh, second uh, benefit that I see is the availability of 24 7 surveillance. And maybe the third one is the welfare information that we have in the uh, issues. Okay, very clear. Uh, I have another question, which is Do you think safety AI solution will cause safety officers to lose their jobs? 
Oh, so uh, definitely not. <laughs> uh, actually, it helped them. It will help them to uh, uh, do their better, uh, to do their jobs better. So uh, they might need to focus on other uh, improvements, uh, improving the processes, for example, analyzing the uh, uh, the violations, root causes that has been detected by the AI solutions. Uh, maybe upskill the workforce to deal with the uh, AI systems and solutions. But uh, definitely not. I think the human beings are uh, evolving better, utilizing the unempowered by the machine intelligence. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, moving Thank to you. our last uh, speaker, uh, Engineer Osama Zabi, uh, Chief Technology Officer at Cisco Middle East and Africa. Uh, he will be talking about um, uh, the power of AI redefining the boundaries. Dr. Uh, Engineer Osama, please, the floor is. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I am honored and pleased to be today with distinguished member of the community, such as Ricardo and Dr. Abdullah, as well as a great moderator like Lama. Over the next few moments, I would like to share with you some thoughts around AI. There is no doubt that we are a special moment in the history of mankind. We are experiencing the highest rate of change known to mankind. Today, one of that change is fueled by the amount of data that is generated. When we talk about AI in particular, AI, it's one of those topics that no matter how you shape it or no matter how you frame it, it all must touch it touches every single thing of the transformation that is happening around us. It is fueled by three things. Number one is about the amount of data that is actually generated globally. Number two is the availability of the compute that we are able to crunch that data and get value out of it. And number three is the algorithms that make value of that data. It is expected that by the next decade, we will have a global value of AI of just near 16 trillion US dollars. And in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia alone, it is expected to top 135 billion USD. When we look at AI, as my colleagues have mentioned in their presentation, how do we bring the knowledge and the experience to the machine? Is the goal and the motive behind that to replace humanity? Or is the goal and motivation with that to augment and to complement the capabilities of human? When we start talking about machine learning, AI is the umbrella under that is how do we teach the machine, but then how do we get in depth as Dr. Abdullah mentioned earlier, but then the context of the data that we are able to feed in the machine in order for us to create that knowledge and experience for the machine. Today, AI is really transforming every single industry that we interact with, from finance to healthcare, media entertainment, no doubt cybersecurity retail, but equally important within the project management space. When we look at AI, it plays different roles into different sectors and verticals. Primarily, when we start looking at the place where human cognitive ability is required, AI plays the less role. When we look at tedious tasks that can be automated, AI plays a bigger role. We at Cisco see that AI can transform and enable tremendous area, one of which is definitely cybersecurity, the hybrid work as we move into reimagining of how applications are being used and transformed, and finally around the infrastructure. I would like to conclude my presentation and keynote in some of those use cases that are within the uh, project management space. The more data we are able to gather, the more intelligent algorithms that we can apply on it, the more capabilities and value we can bring into the project management space around business insights and productivity improvement, taking a holistic look 
around the projects and overcoming the challenges, providing planning and prediction, but also predictive analysis around how projects could potentially uh, uh, perform, but also risk analysis, areas like quality management and resource management, but equally important, the delivery, the efficiency, as well as cost saving. In conclusion, I believe that AI can play a very critical role in adding tremendous value to quite a bit of the verticals and the use cases that we work with, especially in uh, the project management space. With that, back to you, Rema. Thank you for the time. Thank you so much, Engineer Osama, for this exciting presentation. Um, I will start with this question. If an, an organization have about five to 10 projects yearly, how many years of data collecting will be enough to train the model enough? And what do you suggest to, organize, to the organization in that case? So when it comes to project management lemma, the project management is quite a bit of different than other data that's being gathered. Today, the majority of project management and engagement is about human interaction. And therefore, our ability to collect the right contextualized data so that we can benefit, whether it's five to 10 projects a year or more or less, it's about the ability to get the valuable data from those projects, potentially through some human intervention, like interviews, lesson learned, and documentation of those projects so that the value can be realized out of those projects. Okay, uh, then how can an organization know the right data that which is needed to train the model? Shall they just uh, yani, collect everything from the start or they, de they need to identify the, the, the data needed from the start? Well, in my view, the, the more data, the better it is. And ultimately, if you have more data, you can always eliminate the non-needed data. In my view, the more data, the better. However, really every data that needs to be gathered in here, I think where the human element play a very critical role that experts in the PMI and certified and specialized people in the PMI can gather the right relevant data to put it in the right context to realize the value. Okay, very clear. Uh, last question, will adding the old data, even if some data is missing, will be useful in training the model? In my view, yes, because again, the projects, as you know, and, and many of the experts who are attending this session know, the projects have many different phases. And therefore, even if part of that data is available from the old data, I still believe it will be valuable. Once again, the more data that you can get your hand on with specialists that can put some context around it, the better it is for the system to learn. Thank you so much, Engineer Osama. Uh, at the end, I would like to give my warm thanks to our great speakers, Dr. Ricardo, Dr. Abdullah, and Engineer Osama for, for such an informative and enjoyable session. Uh, and I would like to extend my thanks to the organizing committee of the conference for giving me the chance to be part of this. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and enjoy the rest of, this, of the sessions. Uh, and hopefully we can meet again and have many wonderful discussions in the near future. Thank you, everyone.